I will cover how to install and use TimeShift and even how to use it only through the terminal. Arch Linux is hard to learn and the fastest way to learn Arch is by experimenting. But when I experimented, I broke the system very often and that led to me having to reinstall Arch more than five times. And it took me a week to even install NVIDIA drivers. What made everything a lot faster was having this program where before experimenting and doing something risky, I just create a snapshot. And even if I cannot boot into the system as a last resort, I can boot into a live USB, open time shift from there and restore the system to the appropriate snapshot. To install it, let's type sudo pacman dash capital S time shift and hit enter. Password. And here it is. Uh, the default option is yes to, to proceed with the installation. Hit enter for the default option. And it is downloaded. To check if it has installed, you can type sudo pacman qi time shift. And this gives you information uh, about the package, the name, version, everything. Just to be sure, uh, make backups of your files. Use a test machine where you're not working with important files, just so you know what to expect of the program and how it will react. Uh, my advice is to not use it uh, constantly, uh, regularly, uh, from to restore from snapshot to snapshot. Uh, I advise to use it as a, the last option in a desperate situation where you don't have an alternative. Type lsblk. Here we see all the drives, all the disks in their appropriate partitions. We can see each disk, how much size it has. To see more information, type f disk l dev and the name of the appropriate disk. For example, I want to see more information for SDC. I type SDC. Okay, I need more permissions, uh, sudo privileges. So to repeat the previous command with sudo privileges, type sudo to exclamation points. And here I have disk model. This is what I'm looking for. Disk model, it says USB disk. This is more context about the disk. And here I have more information on each partition. So control L to clear the screen and type LSBLK. Now I know which disk is which and I can move on. You can save your snapshots in any partition that is of type Linux file system. To check the type of a partition, you can type sudo fdisk-l dev and the name of the disk. For me, it's SDA. And you can see here all the types. And I know that my root partition is of type Linux file system. So I can save them in my root. You can save them in a partition that is of Linux file system in another disk or an option is to pick a USB device that has a Linux file system partition. But later on, I'll tell you why it's not a good choice to save them in a USB disk. Where should you save your snapshots? The easiest option is in your root partition. If you have a home partition, you can use the home partition. A better option is to create a separate partition in the same disk but it's harder to set up and decide how much space that partition should have. A better option than that is to use a separate hard disk uh, just for the snapshots. It can even have other partitions, but it should have a Linux file system partition just for the snapshots. And another option is to use a USB disk, but this is not recommended because you can do an experiment to transfer 5 to 10 gigabytes of files to your USB device and see how fast or slow the transfer is. For me, it's too slow, like it takes ages to transfer a single snapshot. So I don't use a USB disk for backupping snapshots.
if you're going to create a separate partition, be careful, have backups and triple check everything just to be sure. And be especially careful if you're in the terminal without uh, graphical interfaces like Gparted. And especially if you're uh, in a disk without any unallocated free space. In my case, I have an external drive and I easily created a partition. Creating partitions uh, deserves a video on its own. If I try to cover it here in a few minutes, uh, it will lead to mistakes for someone and I don't want that to happen. If there's interest, I'll just make a separate video that covers everything the right way. Now I'll be using a graphical interface. At a later point, I'll show how to use time shift only with the terminal. So in a graphical interface, in my case, with KDE Plasma, I can search for time shift, hit enter, and it will ask for uh, root privileges. Or if you have in your graphical interface only a terminal, you can just type uh, sudo time shift dash launcher and it will do the same thing. And it will open the first initial setup. For snapshot type, in most for most cases, it's rsync. If you have installed in a regular way Linux, it's rsync. If you have followed my guides, it's rsync. For very few people, it's BTRFS. If you're one of those people, you will be certain. You can even see here, help. Next. Uh, for where to save the snapshots, we cover this. I have picked for me to be the root partition. For snapshot levels, uh, for example, to have daily automatic snapshots, I don't have automatic snapshots created for me because I have very little space. I create them manually. To exclude direct directories, we are not saving our home directory. If you want to back up your home directory, you should use other software. We are also ignoring the root directory. You can uh, edit here however you like. To go through the previous setup once more, if you, for example, made a mistake, you can click the wizard button. To manually create a snapshot, you can click the create button. Here the icon for me is red because I don't have automatic uh, snapshots, for example, daily snapshots, monthly snapshots. I only manually create them. And here you can see all the free space you have for new snapshots. I have 19.5 gigabytes of free space for new snapshots. To create a snapshot manually, hit the create button it will automatically start creating. Depending on how large your system is, this may take a few minutes. If it's a really small system where, for example, you don't even have a, a desktop environment, it will be really fast. And if, you're, if your target is a USB device, this will be a really slow process and it's not recommended to be a USB device. Okay, it's created. To delete a snapshot, you select your snapshot and when you hit delete, it will start deleting it. For, so let me demonstrate. And now from 15 gigabytes, it went up back to 19.5. It is a good practice to comment out your snapshots. So select your snapshot and where it says comments, you have to click and you start editing. For example, initial uh, snapshot. Now let's see an example scenario where we install something. For example, sudo pacman s parpox. Okay, it is installed and we can see it here. Parfox. Here it is. So let's create a snapshot. And let's comment it out. Installed Firefox. To go back to a previous snapshot, you have to select the desired snapshot and hit the restore button. Next, it will ask you to select the proper 
target devices. In my case, for previous uh, times where I have to use time shift, the default options have been what I want and I haven't had a reason to change them. So for the home partition, for example, if you have a separate partition, you have to select it. In my case, I don't have a separate partition for the home directory, so it's on the root device. And my root device is the appropriate one, as well as my uh, boot partition. For bootloader options, the program by default has selected the recommended options and has selected the disk where your root partition of the system is and boot partition of the system, etc. Here, keep in mind that you, you have to know that it will regenerate your group configuration file. So if you have made any manual changes, you will lose them. For example, and it's not a good practice if you have manually edited group uh, CFG after uh, regenerating it, you will lose it because it will be regenerated once more. And usually when you have uh, custom menu entries, you edit this file and after regenerating uh, the group CFG, it will be added once more. So if you don't have any bad practices, you don't have to worry. If you have some bad previous practices, you have to make some backups and uh, correct your bad practices. Another thing to note is if you have dual boot. When you have dual boot, you have to be very careful, especially if you have only one boot partition where you have both Windows files inside and uh, the Linux uh, group files installed. In that case, I'm not sure what the proper approach is, but if you have one boot partition for your Windows system and a separate boot partition for your Linux system, then we will go into more detail where I cover time shift using it only through the console. Uh, and there I will bring out some more notes about dual boot because you will be have you, you will have to be careful with the uh, which boot partition you're picking here because there will be two here and for the bootloader options you will have to be careful with this reinstallation of group and once everything is all right you can click next and it starts restoring and i think it will even restart everything here it wants you to confirm because it says what it will delete and what it will restore back click next if you are sure and here is a disclaimer that it comes with absolutely no warranty that it all depends on you every the safety of the system etc so be very careful read the disclaimer next and now it will say that it will reboot it's doing its thing. Here it's updating the group menu. And it should reboot and boot, and boot back into the system in the state of the snapshot. I have booted back into the system and if I type Firefox, command not found, even sudo pack, pacman UI Firefox, a package Firefox was not found. I successfully went back to my previous state. Let's say we cannot boot into the system. Uh, then uh, you could enter a live USB, for example, with Linux Mint, because it has time shift installed by default. And here I am with, in Linux Mint. You can search for time shift. Here it is. And if we open it, it's the same setup once more. But this time we will select where the snapshots are located. I have saved them in my uh, hard disk with the root partition. Hit next. It will see that there are snapshots there and it's only in restore on mode. You cannot create new snapshots. But for example, I can return it back to the state with Firefox. So I hit restore and there are the usual options we went through before. 
it will go through a dry run, it's not doing anything, then it will ask you, are you sure? And here it is, yes, I'm sure. Once again, the disclaimer, read the disclaimer, be absolutely sure with what you're doing. And we are restoring it from a live USB when we are not able to boot into the system. This has saved me many times. And it is complete and it says if it fails to boot, try restoring from another snapshot. When only using the terminal, you can find the commands with the man page. So with the man command. But in my case, I don't have it. So sudo pacman s man. Uh, just pick the defaults. And then you can type man time shift. And with the down arrow and up arrow, you can move around. And with Q, you quit. Back into the man page, we can see very a lot of details for each and every command and options you can add arguments. But uh, for a quicker rundown, we can go through the examples. Here there are a bunch of examples in a one line. It's harder to read, but I will highlight them, each and every one. Here is the first one. Time shift to dashes list will give out uh, the snapshots, the current snapshots. But uh, it will automatically try to pick which device we are working with, which partition. So what we will use is time shift list, but with snapshot device and the uh, actual partition we're working with. And then to create a snapshot, we will use time shift create snapshot and with a comment so that we know what snapshot it is and without a tag. This tag, uh, what it says is that this will be a daily snapshot, but without a tag, it means it's a manual snapshot. And for restoring, it's time shift to dashes restore. Let's decide where to save the snapshots. So type lsblk. Okay. By default for me it will pick the root partition, but let's say we want to use an external uh, drive that has a formatted Linux file system uh, partition. I'll use sdb1. So let, in order to use it, I have to mount it. Uh, sudo mount and make dir. I will mount it in a new folder. So dev is uh, db1 is the disk I will mount into backup folder. Okay, and now we're ready to create a snapshot. If I type lsblk, you see it's mounted and ready to use. Now let's create a snapshot. Type sudo time shift to dashes create to dashes uh, comments and then the name of the snapshot for example initial snapshot and then we have to say which snapshot device to use and uh, we will use dev sdb1 this is in my case and hit enter and now it's running its process just in the terminal. Okay, and now if we ls into our mounted place, backup, we see a time shift folder in inside. We see snapshots. And here is our snapshot. Our first run of the command with the snapshot device uh, created for us a configuration file. So let's find where that file is. So sudo nano etc timeshift then timeshift.json. And here we have backup device UUID. This is the snapshot device we used. And here you can find all the other configurations that we set up before with the graphical interface. Here you can directly edit them 
in the file. So how many daily snapshots, for example, or if you have uh, turned on schedules. Then, uh, but usually you don't have to touch anything here. The important part is we have the proper backup on device UUID. So now if you just type sudo time shift dash dash create, it should uh, pick the proper device by default. And then of course, adding comments, etc. To restore from a snapshot, type sudo time shift two dashes restore. It automatically picked the right device to work with and found the snapshots. This is because of our first command where we created a snapshot and picked the snapshot device, the proper one. Here we have to enter the proper snapshot number. For me, it's zero. Next, it's asking for to reinstall group load, bootloader. This is the same as when we uh, use the graphical interface. So for more information, go back to the graphical interface usage. Here we will cover just the differences, but be careful and don't follow blindly. Here it's recommended to reinstall bootloader. Now it's asking us to select a group device. Uh, usually the, devo the default option is the right one. And for me, it, it should pick the device where you have the boot partition and root partition of the Linux system where you will install uh, everything. So in my case, the default uh, device is the proper one. For your case, uh, you have to be sure if everything is all right. So default for me is the proper one. Hit enter for the default option, which is for me this one. But if you have another option, you can uh, enter the device name or number, the number or the name. I'll just pick the default option. And once again, the disclaimer to be careful because there is absolutely no warranty and you should be uh, sure in what you're doing and you should have some trust in the software and continue with the restore. Yes or no. I'll hit yes. And it will start restoring everything. And after the restore, it rebooted successfully. Use time shift as the last possible option because some people break their system, especially in a dual boot situation. In my machine, I have um, Windows and Arch installed and I have two boot partitions. If you have dual boot with one, boot partition, for example, the Windows partition, I'm not even sure if it, if you should even try time shift. If you have two boot partitions and Arch Linux one with the group menu is separated, like how I installed it in my tutorial, it's it should be fine to use time shift. I have used it, but it's a bit different than usual because in this situation, when I use time shift and I boot when I boot back into my Windows machine, for some reason it starts uh, checking uh, the file system. It does some kind of a check and then it's it can boot normally into Windows and nothing has happened. But this checking of the system is weird behavior and like I'm not advising you to use time shift in a dual boot situation. In my case, it's working, but for you, just to be safe, look around through the internet uh, for more information. But in my case, it manages to work when the two boot partitions are separated. For example, in my dual boot situation uh, with two separate boot partitions, let's hit reinstall bootloader and here it will ask me for a device and once again it has picked uh, for this machine the device where the boot partition is and the root partition is and then I just uh, hit enter for the default option. For me the default works but once again when I boot into Windows later once, once it will do a check 
for the files. I don't know why, but it does some kind of a check. Maybe I'm making some kind of a mistake, but afterwards it's, it's still working. So once again, using time shift, I'm using it as a last uh, step, uh, a desperate step where the machine is in a really bad state and I don't have any other option. And here once again I hit enter and uh, the it reboots etc. And that's it.